Today's video is sponsored by Corel Painter 2021. Hi guys, in this video I'm going to teach you how to blend. If you don't know what that means, it simply refers to the blending of shades and colors together. Imagine you're doing an oil painting and you have a red color on one side of the canvas and blue on the other side. Blending refers to when these two colors get in contact with each other and creates a smooth transition between the two main colors by producing the in-between colors, which is a mix of the two main colors. And since you guys are so much into big cute faces and rendering of faces and stuff in this video, I'm going to change this face that I drew from this into this. And since this video is sponsored by Corel Painter 2021, we are going to go through this in the Corel Painter drawing program. The blending techniques I'm teaching you today applies to all drawing programs, but I'm also going to show you how much work a program like Corel Painter and the right brushes can do for you. So let's jump into it. To save time, I already have my underpainting ready for this tutorial. If you want to see the entire uncut video in almost real time, you can see that if you are a member of my Patreon. So before I start blending colors onto this gorgeous little face, <laughs> let's go over some general blending techniques that I use. The first one being using a blender brush. Blender brushes are available in many art programs. Sometimes it is referred to as a smudge brush. So if you can't find something called a blender brush, you might be looking for something called a smudge brush. The approach is fairly easy actually. You paint your two main colors next to each other and you use the blender brush to push the colors around until you have a smooth transition. The next technique is manual blending. <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> this is probably the most time consuming technique of them all, but also the one that gives you complete and 100% control over your blends. You still start with your two main colors, then you pick a brush that has some kind of transfer or opacity on it. Brush transfer can be compared to a brush with varying degrees of opacities or a brush that is kind of like fading. The reason we need a brush with transfer is so we don't just paint over our colors when we are trying to blend them. So by using a brush with transfer such as this one, you can brush lightly over the opposite color to get a mixed color of the two underneath that you can then color pick up again and continue blending with. This is the general procedure for when I'm blending manually. I simply color pick in between colors again, again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and again, until I have again, 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 a smooth transition between the two colors. The key here is the color pick. Did I mention that? The last option is to simply use smart brushes. That will do the work for you. I especially like this one option where I work in Corel Painter because some of the most amazing blender brushes can be found here. Corel Painter is known for its brush imitation of traditional art brushes, so when I blend in Corel Painter, I often use this brush called Blender Bristle or the Soft Bristle Brush. That's still really hard to say, Bristle Brush. <laughs> you can find the Blender Bristle under the Artist Oil Brushes. Basically, the br I can't Brenda Blizzle. I want to say Brenda Blizzle. Basically, the blender bristle behaves like an oil brush and keeps pushing the paint around like you would on an actual real oil painting. It's simply easier because I don't have to think too much about picking up the correct colors, I just paint. The same goes for the soft bristle brush. It's a little softer on the blending and it has a very subtle but nice texture in it as well. Those were the three main blending techniques I used when blending. Now let's go over and see how they are applied to my drawing. I prepared this drawing from a Draw This In Your Style challenge by Megals Art on Instagram. So we're going to focus down on the face today when I show you how I blend stuff. Because I think faces is what you guys are most interested in. So the first thing I usually do is I have like a skin layer down here just for the skin. And I'll alpha lock this layer so that when I draw on it, I can only draw on the pixels that are already there on the layer. Alpha locking is the same as doing a clipping mask, but you just draw on the same layer when you're alpha locking and not making a new layer. So you can keep your layers to minimum when you do it like that. So the thing I'll do is I'll color pick up the skin color 
and then I'll pick a shadow color. I'll hue shift a bit towards the pink and I'll pick a dark color like that. And then I'll take my airbrush and then I'll start to softly paint in the shadows. So in this case, the light will be coming from the left over here shining down onto the characters in this direction, so the shadows are going to be on this side of the face, primarily. There's also going to be some shadow inside of this ear. Whoops, the brush is too big. Like that. Under the hair. And here in this little alcove. And on the neck. So I want to add a second shadow color that's a bit darker. Brush that in as well. Just very lightly. I'm not really thinking too much about where to put it except for the direction of the light. It's going to change a bit around when we start to blend it either way. And then what I will usually do, I'll take a more solid brush, like this one, to paint in like detail areas, right here under the chin, inside the ear, under the nose, trying to follow the shape of the nose, under the eyes, and this alcove here. And inside the ears over here. And then under the hair. I can see I left some spots of hair that I should remove. And on the horns. We're going to also discuss an interesting subject that is hard versus soft uh, transitions or shadows or highlights. So sometimes you'll get like hard edges like this, sometimes you'll get more smooth transition, like in this area here. So we're going to do a mix of the two to make it look more fluent. I think this area may be in shadow. And these little guys here and under the chin. So this is a very general procedure for me. Now I haven't blended anything yet, uh, but we can start doing so by also adding some highlights that we can blend with. So I'll color pick my base color up again, and then I'll shift a bit towards the yellow tones this time and pick a lighter color and use my airbrush. It's going to be a lot more light on the face over here because this is the direction the sun is coming from, or the light source, doesn't have to be a sun. And then here. And on the horns, on this side. And then I'll take my more solid black color brush and do the same as we did before. So I'm starting with a soft airbrush with the shadows, then I'm moving over to harder edges with the shadows, and then I move over to highlights, first with the soft airbrush again, and then with a more solid. I like to add kind of like this rim light here on the nose as well, for the light coming from over here. And there are going to be some light falling here, and here, and on the chin here. So as you can see, I'm just still painting very loosely. And on the eyelids, they have a tendency to catch light as well. Because they bold kind of outwards. So this, right now, is where I will start to blend. And we can do it the manual way, 
I color picking, paint over, color pick, paint over. I keep doing that. I need a bigger brush for this. How big is this? Better. Color pick and paint over, color pick and paint over. Keep doing this. Until we have a nice blend. Don't want this highlight to go into the shadow though. It's a little aggressive this brush. When I say aggressive, I mean like in terms of it doesn't have a lot of transfer. So I can actually set that manually by also lowering the opacity of the brush. So this is the method that gives you complete control over your blending. But it's also very, very tedious sometimes and it takes a lot of time. The other technique we could use is a blender and in Corel they have their own little category out here blenders and there are a lot of different blenders that you can choose from and it's just about trying out different stuff let's see the oil blender it's not big enough sometimes increasing the size of your brush can give you a better result. So this is the kind of result that I get from the oily blender. You can see kind of like it has this texture right here. I really like that actually, this texture. Here we go. So that's one method. Maybe a coarse oily blender. That's a little too big. It has this kind of same kind of texture to it. So it works kind of like a smudge brush. Picks up the colors, smudges them together with some texture. I really like the texture. Now I accidentally went in over the nose, but that doesn't matter because we're going to blend that later. You can see this brush is also very aggressive. It really pushes the paint back and forth. If you don't like that, always try a new one. This one has a lot of funky texture. A smear. That sounds great. Oh, yes. This is nice. But my favorite way to blend is by using a brush that simply does it for you. Where are my brushes? They're in the bottom. These are just a collection of my favorite brushes that I've saved from all of these categories in Corel Painter. So these are my favorite brushes. And I really like this one called Blender Bristle. It's a little big right now. You pick up the color and you blend. It gives kind of this hard edge. It's also very aggressive, so you can sit down the opacity if you like. Every time you lift your stylus, it will kind of lay down the paint again and that's when you should definitely remember to color pick. I like the texture that comes with this brush too, it's really nice and smooth. It just adds a little bit of edge to your drawing. I mean, if there are areas where you think now that, ah, uh, damn it, I added too much texture or I lost some of the color, I like to just go back. Where is it? Take the the, the airbrush and lightly paint in in this area. Right here, I'm using the soft bristle. It also leaves kind of texture-ish strokes. I'm gonna use my flat color to gain some of the light back in.
and my soft bristle. So that's the general process. So now I'll just take a minute to blend some of this together. And while I'm doing so, I'd like to spend a few seconds thanking Corel Painter for sponsoring this tutorial. Corel Painter comes with over 900 realistic brushes and they're all customizable. And if you buy an additional brush pack, you can work with over thousands of brushes. Corel Painter 2021 edition comes with a brush accelerator, which makes most use of your computer's hardware and graphics card so that you can paint with the best possible experience of Corel Painter. There is so much to Corel Painter and if you'd like to try it out for yourself, download a free trial today using the link in the video's description. If you're a traditional artist, you may recognize many of these digital brushes and as an aspiring digital artist, you'll be able to now paint in any medium, whether it being oil paints, margos, watercolor or gouache with Corel Painter directly on your computer. And if you have fallen in love with the program, you can either purchase a full license or use a subscription-based billing. We're about to be done with the overall blending, and now I'll continue taking you through the process. Thanks so much again to Krill Painter for sponsoring this video. And from this stage is typically where I will create that new master layer that I will have on top of everything called Render. It's just what I like to call it. Reindeer. Reindeer. <laughs> Render. <laughs> And that's when I will take something, something like a, a flat color brush or something, maybe a detailed bristle. In Corel Painter, when you're about to paint on a new layer, that does not include the alpha locking feature. You should remember to turn it off because you toggle it for all eight layers at the same time. So if you have an empty layer and you feel like you can't draw anything, it's probably because you have alpha locking locked on all your layers and your layer is empty. But I like to use something that gives me more detail. And the, this little detail bristle might be really good for this when I'm starting to paint over the line art. Like this. But I have a other video explaining a lot of my rendering process, so that's not what we're here for. I just want to show you what the ne next steps kind of are. And I'll also keep blending in this stage. Everything will be blended. Now oh, I kind of need hard brush to draw out the circle. And then I should blend it upwards there with this fine soft brush that I really like. Whoops. I wanted to pick up the underlying color and not paint with white. You can toggle that on and off for that one because I was on an empty layer, as you can see, if I toggle it off. It kind of wants to pick up the white of the black blank canvas underneath, which I don't want. So I can toggle that it, I want it to pick up the paint that lies underneath, which is the skin. So we can get this nice blend here. I found that this fine soft brush was my favorite blender in Corel Painter. It was really smooth and had just the nice amount of texture. And then I'll pick also some lighter highlights. I can make these little details with. And that's the core basics of how I blend. So thank you so much for watching all the way to the end guys. It means the world to me because you helped me survive the YouTube algorithm by doing so. If you want to support my work and make sure I keep making videos in the future, like this video so I can keep my game up with the algorithm. Comment for a super ultimate support and even share this video for super ultra mega cool ring a ding ding dong supporting of my work. <laughs> and remember to download a free trial of Corel Painter by using the link in the description if you want to try out this amazing piece of software for yourself. Until next time guys, take care. Bye!